this is Weird Al Yankovic, and you're watching Video Bob. <laughs> Aren't you? So, when we build these, we use this really strong glue to hold the LEDs on. Really and now, glue. Omar's trying to get the glue off. Really good, man. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to change out the LEDs. Back over 10 years ago, the technology of doing LEDs in a band was new because before that, we used to actually put neon on the car. If you saw the car that we did on the TV show Auction Kings, that car had actual glass neon with a 15,000-watt transformer. And then soon after that, this technology came out with the bands of LED. Before that, they had an Indiglo um, product, but it just wasn't very bright. So the new product that we're using is, is called Cobb Flex. All right, I've mocked this up. Let's see. So this is, this. what's cool about this material is notice how it's like one continuous line instead of the little dots. But what makes it great is if you fire it up. At, God damn. Ah, I have my shades. Jesus, I, I'm, I can't even look at it. <laughs> Ow, that's bright. Wow, that's bright. Like, I'm telling you, it's so bright, I, it's like welding. I can't even look at it. It's hurting my eyes. Jesus. I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, trying to exaggerate. Is that, am I kidding? How bright is that? Yeah, yeah you need a... Like basically have a welded helmet to it. The hurt, the hurt your eyes. Yeah, yeah you kind of look directly at it. Yeah, you, if you look right at it, it's kind of... Fuck. Oh, so looking... Yeah, like I, I, yeah, I got purple uh, snakes in my eyes now. Anyway, so uh, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. So, yeah, this is what we use now. <laughs> and you'll see a lot of time machines out there using blue light. Um, but you know, we've argued about this lots of times. The ones in the movie were white. They were this ne white, like, uh, neon, you know, they were white neon, but when you film white at night along with warm light, they appear blue. And then the other thing that happened is that when they make toys in the eighties, they didn't have such a thing as white LEDs, so they they put blue ones in there, and they so it's just one of it's it's sort of like uh, what do they call it the Mandela effect? People the Mandela effect they they imagined that they were blue, and so then they would make them blue on toys, on comic books, and posters, and like, but they're not blue. Go watch the movie, and they're kind of a light tinge bluish when you you know white on camera. You know, these cameras that, that I'm using an iPhone have really good white balance. But if you look at old video cameras back in the 80s, you would go outside and then if you didn't adjust the, they had a filter that you had an outdoor filter and an indoor filter. And if you had it on the wrong filter, it would look, uh, it would make all the lights look blue or green. And that's what's going on in the movie. Anyway, so we do it just like in the film. So what he's got to do is he's got to cut these old LEDs off we put on over 10 years ago with his, with his, uh, what, what was I trying to say? Uh, what was that stupid movie? Crocodile Dundee. That's, yeah, that's not a knife. That's a knife. Yeah. So he's got to carve that thing off before he loses a finger. And he's been in here whittling away on these things for hours. So for my client watching this, when I send him the bill and he goes, that took how many hours? I'm going, listen, do you realize how much work this is? How long did it take you to do that one? Um, like an hour, we still have to do a lot of work. And oh yeah, I mean, because once we peel them off, we're gonna clean, clean up, when I say we, I mean this guy. He's gonna, <laughs> we're gonna clean it with degreaser, make them shiny, get them all hooked up again. And then, and then we go back over them uh, th these lights are like waterproof, but they're really kind of not. So what we do is we use like a, a really good um, high tack. This is the pro this is why you can't get it off because this stuff is good. It's meant to last forever. It's not supposed to come off. 
and and it's and it's crystal clear. I mean, look how clear it is even after all these years. I mean, it's yellowed a bit. Like really, the 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 glue hasn't turned yellow. It was dirty and looking. The ugly, lights are yellow. Once I washed it, it's clear again. Yeah, the yeah. lights turned yellow, but the 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 clear stayed clear. So. We just found that this was the best way to do it. We, we tried a lot of different ways, and everybody has their own version of how they do it, but this stuff here, man, it is bright. It just hurts your eyes bright. So um, that's what we're putting on the cars now, along with the power systems, as we talked about the power system. Um, we also, Omar came over here. We, we swapped out some of the stuff on this side panel we're not gonna do these plates and things he doesn't want to spend a ton of money but we've upgraded what we call the hockey pucks area here this cooling grid this looks ten thousand percent better very happy with that we're gonna try to clean up this back area as well um and then this you know there's supposed to be a mess of wiring but this is the wrong mess of wiring if that makes sense the rubber brackets holding up well some of them have gotten kind of dried out. Might need to replace some of those. Again, this car has been up in Reno, up in the heat, for more than 10 years. And uh, it's a good case study. This particular guy, he wanted... Now, yes, the screws are rusty. And we've talked about this before. The screws are supposed to be rusty. Because that's how the real car is. But... Um, this guy wanted the boxes painted silver. And there's always been a lot of contention and argument over the color of the boxes, depending on the movie. That uh, We've all agreed that they're kind of a metallic blue, sort of like the anodization that you see on these um, crossover tubes, right? And he didn't like the blue. He wanted them sil he specially requested we do them this way. And these are our old style boxes. Um, it's kind of a long story. These were sourced from one of the part three cars. The ones we use now are off of the A car. Um, so we're working on all this stuff and he's complaining that a lot of these parts don't work anymore. Could just be they're not wired right because somebody's been fiddling around in here. We need to fix this. That red switch doesn't belong there. We didn't put that there. Somebody must have swapped out that switch. I'm pretty sure. Um, hmm. All this is getting changed. Jack was supposed to come do this today, and he didn't do it. Don't hurt yourself. Remember, I was talking yesterday at Sam's, talking about these screwdrivers. This is that screwdriver. Like, look how cool this thing is. You got this rack of this thing locks down I can't get it out there it is couldn't do it with one hand yeah you get this is how it keeps all the bits which is super cool and then um, it's just a great screwdriver and he uses it all day we're working on this binnacle like whenever we get a DeLorean we always have to take this thing out take it apart we take the take this whole thing apart this is always loose needs to be fixed we change out the speedometer with one that says 95 miles an hour as i've talked about before the speedometer in the real delorean only went to 85 much like a lot of cars back in 1985 or back in the 80s i should say and um in the movie they had to make it say 95 because the car had to go 88 miles an hour and they wanted to show that on the speedometer but then after they looked at it they go that's still not enough and then they came up with the display and they go oh okay that's better and this was uh, one of the remotes. Th this particular remote, I'm selling some of these. I've got a couple of them for sale. I did a video on it before you saw. And um, this one, this particular rem Futaba remote, all the switches are broke off. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Like they, they look like they've been cut off or broke off. It literally looks like somebody broke, like, like cut them off or something. So all the switches are... So this particular one, yeah, the switch is gone. So this one's going to be discounted. And... Um, so what it does... Hold on. 
That's the engine. I forget which switch does what. My calculations are correct. Yeah, this is it. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. So he, he, he does that. And then he uh, revs it up and then it starts moving. So I demonstrated this in another video. I, uh, I'm selling the really good one that's in perfect condition in the case for $2,500. This one I'm gonna sell for only $2,000. That's a $500 discount because all of these switches are broken and to fix it would be really difficult. You're just not gonna. So if somebody wants this one for 500 bucks, I'll let you have it. Watch it, here it goes. What's this? What's this? And then it disappears because it goes through time. What did I tell you? I forgot to take the brakes off. Anyway, so somebody wants this thing. This is the only one. It's a pretty good replica. It's a, a collaboration I did with Doc's Prop Shop. So Doc's Prop Shop makes this box and this thing, and then I took the remote, and then Omar put it together for us. So very cool. Um, somebody wants it, hit me up, send me a message. Go to Bob's Prop Shop on Facebook and send me a personal message. And that could be yours. This is just kind of a view of, this is one of our um, upper consoles. And um, this one here has been sitting here for a few months. It's covered in dust filthy but it adds patina i like it here's something that we make you know there's this little bottle that goes behind the thing and like look at the detail that goes into like this is all cast resin it's 100 percent cast resin and then hand painted but look how good that is like the serial numbers are in there like pretty impressive you know the way we've gotten <coughs> gotten that and the, how that works is I don't think I'm giving away any secrets to people who know how to do this stuff, but everything goes through both a vacuum and pressure chamber. Taking a look inside this Knight Rider project. This is an LS1 conversion car. It's been put on hold. So this will be available soon. We're putting a whole new interior in there, as you can see. So all the carpet, all the plastics redone. Um, we're going to build. We, have, we still have to finish building the dash. Got new door panels going in here. This obviously was a red car painted black. So when it's done, that's actually a really cool steering wheel. I like it. But we actually have a different one that I'm going to put in here, maybe. Got to finish building out the upper con or the center console. Put in the headliners. So, a lot of work has to go into this car. It's up on a rack. Just because we had to ooh, get it out of the way. But putting an LS1 in a car nowadays is kind of a, you know, it's about a $20,000 prospect. Let me go up this ladder this way. There's another time machine sitting in the wings. Let me. There we go. Yeah, look at this thing, dude. Yeah. This thing's a screamer. So this will be available soon. If, you, uh, if you're if you interested in a custom Knight Rider project, that would be the one you would want. For this DeLorean, I forget what's up with this one. This one, look at the cobwebs on this light. It's ridiculous. Um, oh yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> There's no engine. No, there's part of an engine. This car's getting uh, a lot done to it. We haven't really even started on this car. I think we're changing the frame on this car is the deal. I bought this from, I think this is the car I bought from Beverly Hills Car Club. And they're not known for quality and truthfulness. <laughs> because um, they said it ran and was in good shape. <laughs> they lied. So this is what happens, you know, like I think I paid what, 40 grand for this car? 
So we're actually gonna put an entirely new frame on this car and redo the whole engine. And we thought about doing a custom engine or drivetrain. We thought about doing an, either an electric EV conversion or possibly an LS1 conversion, but each of those are gonna be in the 25 to $30,000 range. Now we sell our time machines for 150,000. And I thought maybe someone would pay 200,000 for one of these cars if it were just hot rotted out. Talking about either LS1 or an EV conversion. All new frame, all new components, steering, you know, all that stuff done, everything done to it. I just don't know if the market will bear that kind of um, cost, you know. Just like this LS converted Knight Rider. We, we typically get about like 50, 60 grand for a decent Knight Rider. This one's going to have to be in the like probably, I'd say $75,000 range. Because there's like $25,000 worth, worth of engine in it. This thing over here, this time machine, uh, uh, we just showed this one a minute, you know, earlier in the video yesterday or the other video. And it's almost finished, but we just had to put it on the back burner because we're working on those bands. Okay, so Jack has this gutted out. We're, we're going to try this battery. Apparently, this, this battery fits in there. Huh? We like this one. Like it's the right height. Yeah? That battery, yeah? Like it, it's the right height. I think it fits in there just right. Um, will it go, have you tried though? This is the question, like. I can spin it about anywhere. Well, I know, but I wonder if it'd be better. I wonder if it'd go more forward, no. Because the fog machine's still gonna sit on top of it a bit, isn't it? Correct. So but is it, it's on the pegs where it was. That's so the it's the same one. height as the other one. the same height as the other batteries, yeah. This is like a. It might uh, be a 16th tall. Military quality 200 amp battery. <laughs> that would power your house. I was just gonna move the, the brackets in. So maybe what we do is take a couple of uh, angle brackets and just tap them into place to keep it from wobbling around. Well, it's just gonna scooch these in. I'm gonna reuse this bracket. Yeah, I see. So we'd fabricated a whole, this. See, Those are so well, so nicely riveted. Yes. But I'm just gonna drill those four out, scoot it over, yeah. pop four more okay. in, and it's. I got gotcha. you. I mean, a little extra ventilation holes won't hurt nothing. It's not gonna go anywhere. But yeah, my choice is the battery can be here, or. Be careful right there. Yeah. Or it's got. So it's got I know, but it could still access it. But. Do a little little amateur little, welding. Or it can go there. Those are really your two. Have you lifted this thing yet, or no? No. I that, wanna it's, it's I wanna find out if these the, if these shocks are adjustable. I think they're Eibach. That's good shit right there. Uh, oh, this shot for ah. Well, you don't don't lay on the floor. Lift it up in the air. Yes, yes, they are hundred percent adjustable. They're just collars on the shocks. You loosen them with an Allen bolt and put it wherever you want. Clamp we got to raise this thing at least an inch. Yes, an angry inch. An angry inch, because the he he complains the. Uh, the pipe scrapes on everything. He spray painted the bottom of this thing with the same like gold wheel paint that like the Batmobile had on it. Who? Whoever did this, somebody spray painted this with this gold. DeLorean Motor Company did it that. Looks, it looks great. It's got kind of a titanium look to it, but it reminds me of the, oh, the, the Batmobile wheels. DMC Houston did a stage two stainless exhaust. Uh, I think they do like, they. I think they port the heads or, or they, they cam it, they, they Put in their Knology wire system, iBox springs. Like he dropped like ten grand on this before he even sent us the car. Wow. That's why it runs like it runs. I gotta say they do a good job. Uh, so I'm dying to look under it and check it out. Also, what happens is if they don't torque those collars, it can push them down. So that might not be where the ride height. Was this thing sits that. way too low. We it just needs an inch. It'll still look good. But like you can't clear anything. I couldn't even hardly get it out of the trailer without it scraping. It's just, it's just too with the custom exhaust hanging out the back. You don't want to yeah, it's just too that. low, bro. Too low, bro. Too low. So what do you think? Further back or further forward? Whatever works. Okay. Whatever helps seat the fog machine. But it looks nice. Yeah, see, look, it snaps. Bam. Pow! Look at you. He's still wrestling over there with his razor blade and his 
Man, that's... I don't think there's a chemical way to remove that silicone. It's It says on the bottle, shit doesn't come off. My, yo, it's sticky. My suggestion is wire wheel. Take a wire wheel on a wheel. But it's just going to gum up the wheel really fast. Centrifugal force flings the shit everywhere. Yeah, it's going to go all over the place. Look, up look at him. Silicone off the board for weeks. Got his concentration face on it. Focus, focus. <laughs>